Hey everybody, it's me for Girlie here and welcome back to the 12 days of Wake and Bake. Today is day number 10 and we're going to dig into the archive. I know I've mentioned this uh, already once in this series. I mentioned it on the GrowTube and on my video or on my YouTube channel here in the past. Um, but we're finally going to crack this boy open and see what's inside. So basically what the archive is or the Frigoli archive is just an assortment of nugs, samples, waxes, concentrates, flour, you name it. Anything that's come from my garden or has been gifted to me that I thought worth holding on to for one reason or another. Now it's certainly not all head stash. I actually have some of the worst weed I think I've ever grown in here as well. But um, let's just dig right into it. We're gonna bust out a raw king size cone today because you know when you're, when you're going into something this special, you gotta gotta go big or go home. Um, but yeah, let's just hop right in here. So the first thing first is this is the only one I think I have in here that isn't my own. And this is the Med Grower One Skunk Beard, which we checked out on day number four of the 12 Days Awake and Make. So shout out to Med Grower Number One. Check him out on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, yeah, go back and watch day number four if you missed it. Um, this bag is the more recent stuff, and some of the things I wanted to go over in the Two Guys One Crop series. So maybe we'll get to some of this soon here on my channel. Um, but what we have in here is an assortment of stuff that came out of the FMG canopy. I believe maybe, is there anything in here from the Fregoli farm? I think, yeah, this is the only one. So Chemox number four is the, the most recent Fregoli farm harvest we have here, a sample of. So Chemox number four. We got Kimbo Kush, and this dates back. This is from April of last year. So Kimbo Kush, that's I believe, probably from, probably from the FMP canopy. It's got to be the rest of these. Got to be. Um, we have a Chemox number four from the FMG canopy. So I think those were two of those that we kind of uh, grew in. You know, two locations at the same time. Got them tested at the same time. Just did two uh, two different nutrients. Um, we also have Star Killer. There's no data on this one, but a little tiny bit of Star Killer left. And then we have two pretty special samples here, and uh, that's a 10 week and an 11 week Durban Poison. Now we've we've grown this out as long as 12 weeks before at least. Um, like I said, I got a 10 11 here, and we find that kind of between 10 and 11 is when it tests. Um, highest at the lab so we've tested at nine weeks ten weeks eleven weeks twelve weeks um, and they're out you know throughout and um, yeah it seems like that like 72 to maybe 77 day mark uh, seems to be best and last but not least we have some cookies and cream and I'm not entirely sure what harvest this is from there's no data on that so that is all the flower samples we have here I'm gonna pick one I thought we we're gonna do dominoes I'm gonna pick one to dig into um, and man, this cookies and cream kind of sounds good right now. Hmm, cookies and cream or, you know what, oh, there's such little left, but I'm going to go with the Star Killer. I got to go with Star Killer. Uh, Star Killer is uh, Amazing Gru's favorite strain, at least currently, and uh, it's, it's one of the heaviest hitting ones we have in the FMG canopy. Um, tests like 23 or so percent THC, I think. Um, so it's, it's certainly up there, especially compared to some of the strains I've grown. Um, but she's just a pretty heavy hitting OG leaner. I guess I could, uh, before I start grinding it up, show you guys the nug, huh? Let me come up around so we get a little bit better view rather than try to do it from all the way across. So yeah, it's not going to be the best view, of course. Can't get it all that close without, uh, you know, destroying my lighting here. So, but just super dense and uh, very tasty. It's got that kind of like spicy kick to it that I find some strains have. All right, make sure you guys are in focus here. <laughs> Hopefully that's in focus. Alright, so I'm going to take just a wee bit more off this so I can make sure I pack up this king size joint all the way. 
but I do want to save just a tiny little bit, maybe like a bowl or two's worth, because you know, this is the only star killer I believe I have in here, and I'm realizing I actually do have more flour in here. This is all just the uh, the most recent stuff, so all the much older stuff in here, and I'm looking. It looks like we're dating back as far as August of 2015. Is some of these strains in here? I'm going to show you in a second. And uh, that would definitely just be over there at the Ferroli farm. And uh, that's some pretty optimal conditions over there for, for a long time. Um, oh, it's, that's so good. Um, yeah, I had a really good, uh, good experience with the Ferroli farm. Learned a lot, um, grew a lot, and progressed a lot. Um, continue to progress over at the FMG Canopy and I'll continue to do so even further but we will get to that soon and uh, while I'm packing up this king size cone of star killer from probably about nine months ago I'm gonna guess probably in the range of like eight to ten months ago this this uh, star killer has been jar curing so it's quite the long cure Normally nothing lasts that long, but if you get it out of sight, out of mind, and put it in you know your archive, then sometimes it's nice to be able to bust it out like this, share it with uh, some special friends or or the YouTube fans. All right, as I'm finishing this, so I have the two probably my least two favorite ever runs in here, and. That includes, well, not just the runs, I should say, the my least uh, favorite two strains that I've grown. And one of them is, where is it, Purple Trainwreck, and the other is Dynachem. I did not have good experiences with either of these. Um, I don't think they lasted very long in my garden, and they certainly would not last a cycle in my garden nowadays. This is the Dynachem that's been in this jar since August 7th of 2015. And it just doesn't even smell good. <laughs> what about this one? This is the Purple Train Wreck 829 in 2015. That actually doesn't smell as bad, but that Dynachem was pretty nasty. Now I've got four more in here. Um, two of them, uh, these two are kind of interesting because it's one of the first like, I guess real pheno hunts I did where I really like grew out a strain with multiple phenos like side by side all the way through and this is Harlox number one and Harlox number two. Uh, those are rare dankness, those are more of the CBD leaning strains although it's not like a, it's a pretty low ratio, it's not like one to one or two to one or anything like that. I don't remember which phenotype was which, but they were pretty different. Um, one of them was just if it got stressed out and go all funky pretty quickly, and the other one was kind of a dumper, like good sized nugs. I don't, you know, it's pretty good size. Uh, but yeah, just not worth keeping around in the garden. Eventually, I ended up cutting them. Now these two, um, these are two pretty good ones. My Pineapple Express, I was decently satisfied with still I don't know if I would keep this pheno in my garden today but there's certainly pineapple express phenols that I would like to have back because um, I've had I've, I've tasted that juicy juicy pineapple before and it's really really good I feel like all these 2015 ones are starting to smell the same I think I might have to leave them open to really get the hint of the flavor but um, this one this one breaks my heart. This is Silver Kush. I haven't had Silver Kush in my garden in quite some time. Uh, never grew it over at the FMP canopy, I don't believe. I think it basically was done by the time I was done with the Ferroli farm. Um, the OG Ferroli farm, that is. And uh, But yeah, this one, this Silver Kush, this is like a haze and super silver bubble or super silver 
Hayes, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's, a, it's a good cross in the Hayes family and it's kind of my introduction into that terpenaline strain like a, or terpenaline terpene profile like I've talked about before which tend to go more with the sativa strains and um, exist in our lime skunk and our Durban poison and our grapefruit Durban. Yeah, they're really, I mean, I know this smelled like silver kush when I put it in the jar a couple years ago. Um, so I bet you I'd have to really probably just grind it up and smoke it up um, to get those flavor profiles. But I'll be honest, all those ones that are uh, two and a half years old at this point, not really smelled all that great after opening those jars. Um, let's go ahead and light this up because uh, we're dragging on here and this is a morning wake and bake. But... I want to give you a hint of what's uh, what's left in here, and maybe we'll uh, get into that at some point. But cheers, guys! Ten days in, almost there. That's that spice, that OG spice in there. Man, so as I was saying before the camera cut out, this almost, that kind of spicy like flavor that this has almost reminds me of Gorilla Glue 4. It doesn't taste like Gorilla Glue 4, but it has that like weird kind of spiciness to it. It's hard to describe, but I, I was just talking to Amazing Guru about how uh, Gorilla Glue 4 is one of those ones that have that weird like herbal spice kind of back, uh, back note to it, and it certainly does to the Star Killer. But obviously we're pushing past 10 minutes here, so I don't want to drag you guys out too long, but I got some pretty other good things to talk about here, and I think, uh, I think I'm just going to make you wait. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bust this bad boy open tomorrow, and uh, <coughs> we're going to dig into the concentrates that I got in here. We've talked about the flour. Everything from the Chemox to the Durban Poisons, the Star Killer, and some things that are haven't been in my garden for years and years. But uh, the other stuff I have in here is all pretty recent, and it's uh, it's all concentrates. So we've got live resins, we've got crumbles, we've got Durban Poisons and 24 karat golds, chubby bunnies and lime skunks, and OG blends and dry sift resins and there's even that true OG live resin. I know I asked you guys what uh, what you guys like me to pull out of the archive, and someone did mention true OG. So maybe we'll give that a dab. Uh, it's been a while since I've had that. And uh, with that, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Make sure you click that thumbs up button. Comment about uh, the archive, what you guys think of it. Um, have you guys held on to any... You know, any samples of your harvest for more than a couple years? What did you think? Did it maintain its uh, potency, its flavor, its smell, or anything like that? Because um, I'll be honest, I, I'm definitely going to keep that Silver Kush around and probably that Pineapple Express, but I'm going to have to try those other ones because they just they don't even smell good. So I'm curious to know if, uh, if maybe uh, I didn't store them right or store them too long or, or what, but. Cheers to you guys with subscriber base. We're over 9,000 subscribers there, getting close to 10. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Check me out on Weed Maps, on Instagram at Fergoli Farms, and at Fergoli.com. Until next time, guys, good luck and grow big.